to know. We just trying to catch it. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us for a new week here on What You Need to Know. We're very happy you're with us on this Monday. Yeah. TJ Holmes has the day off. Lucky him, but we're wishing well him the deserved. best. Yes, well deserved. In fact, an ABC chief medical correspondent, Dr. Jen Ashton, is here with me now, and we are watching an array of new developments. Of course, Hurricane Ida, the big story making landfall in Louisiana as a Category 4, now downgraded to a tropical storm. And in the coronavirus emergency, this big number catching our attention. Adolescents are now the fastest growing group when it comes to getting vaccinated. In fact, 50% of U.S. children aged 12 to 17 have received their first shot. That is from the head of the White House COVID-19 team. And Jen, um, as we're dealing with one of the most destructive hurricanes to hit Louisiana, the New Orleans hospitals would already have had their hands full with COVID-19 patients, but now you've got uh, possible injuries stemming from the hurricane itself. So tell us about what this unfortunate confluence of events Yeah, creates. I think people really... So we're going to be keeping a close eye on it. All right, thank you very much. Bet. Dr. Jen, we're going to turn now to ABC's Kira Phillips in Washington with the latest headlines. And Kira, good afternoon. I know you're continuing our coverage of Ida. Yes, then who came in for the final innings. Well, apparently he has quite a cult following for his mullet and his <laughs> lawn mowing business. <laughs> Definitely a look and work ethic made for the big leagues. Yeah, he's going to fit right in, Kara. Perfect. All right, thank <laughs> you for that. And there is much more ahead here on this GMA3 Monday. Welcome back to GMA3. Hurricane Ida hit Louisiana as a 150 mile per hour category four hurricane. It is now tied for the strongest storm to ever make landfall in that state. And it did so on the 16th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. Joining us now is Cynthia Lee Shang, president of Jefferson Parish. Uh, president Shang, thank you for being with us. And, and you've called this, and understandably so, a worst case scenario. So if you can give us a sense of what the situation's like there on the ground. Well, I'll your biggest concerns are right now. The biggest concern is getting to the biggest concern is protecting life and search and rescue is the number one priority right now. But also Jefferson Parish, we should mention, is without power, without water. Any idea when those services could be restored? So in addition to search and rescue being the priority today, the other priority for us is... And speaking of those communication difficulties, reportedly some of the 911 systems in your region are not uh, working well or at least reporting some technical difficulties. And obviously as those search and rescue operations are going on, you may have people stranded trying to get help. What's your advice for anyone who's maybe experiencing that situation? water. Obviously, it was 16 years ago that Louisiana's levee system was overpowered by Katrina. And now we're hearing from uh, Governor John uh, Bell Edwards saying uh, that the models are saying that those levees are going to hold, but this is obviously going to be the biggest test since 16 years ago. What's your level of confidence need right now or what do you need the most from the federal government at this time? so busy uh, trying to tend to all of these different needs right now and our and our hearts are with you it is heartbreaking seeing what's happening there what what uh, Ida has done to your area but thank you for your time and expressing your needs and we hope you get the help you deserve President Cynthia Lee Shang of Jefferson Parish be well and thank you thank you up next right here when we come back hot chicks LA and we're back now with a hot and tasty twist on chicken from an enterprising family in LA thriving through the pandemic and now back in the GMA3 spotlight with this update. Take a look. I love that and now I'm absolutely starving, but thank you for that. Just ahead here on GMA3, Dr. Jen Ashton answering your questions about another coronavirus. Welcome back to What You Need to Know, GMA3. I'm very excited about this uh, <laughs> next little segment here because you're going to talk about one of the things I love to eat, which Walnuts. walnuts. I know you were just telling me how many. I, and yes, you can chop them in. up. Some strawberries, some feta cheese over greens. It's an amazing salad, but you're ah. also getting some health benefits. Yes. So there's a new study. At walnuts, about a half a cup a day. They mm -hmm. followed them for two and a half years. So it's in so many things. Right? I really love walnuts. I mean, I know you have an allergy, unfortunately, yeah. but but nuts are like a huge part of my diet because they're filling, they're That's healthy right. fats, and they all have other benefits. I think walnuts always been known as a superfood. I mean. Any kind of nut is going to good news Sprinkling for you. Them on a salad. And That's how go. I usually eat them, actually. I chop them up. So instead of having croutons or something yeah. else, put some nuts on your salad. Good there you for go. your palate and your cholesterol. Exactly. All right. We'll be right back. 
I'm sure you recognize that voice, the voice of the Oprah Winfrey there and The Lion King and Hamilton, among half a dozen musicals that are set to reopen. Disney, of course, the parent company of ABC News. All right, I had chills because I'm so excited. Me All right, <laughs> Dr. Jen's here with some exciting answers mm -hmm. to your medical questions. First one, I said fixate on something, but... All right, Dr. Jen, you thank bet. you as always. You can submit questions to Dr. Jen on her Instagram at Dr. J Ashton. Well, we're gonna turn now to something many people are experiencing as the country reopens. Many of us have been away from family, from friends, classmates, colleagues for more than 18 months. And so a lot of people feeling some social anxiety and even awkwardness. It's so awkward now when you have to greet people, right? It's the new normal. You're not alone, everyone. We're all feeling it. So here to help us get into social shape. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So as I said, yes, a lot of us are trying to uh, reacclimate to to getting back into a social scene, whether it be with family or classmates or colleagues. And um, your book, Relatable, is about how to connect with anyone, anywhere, even if it scares you a little. Yes, yes. I try to sol solve those problems. Your book is perfectly timed. Because <laughs> it's just we're all having to relearn things now. You have some advice, and one of the first tips you say is to uh, to be understanding. What yes. do you mean by that? Empathy is key in terms of that everybody can build. And you also say in terms of connecting, we need to connect authentically. I mean, that would be the goal, yeah. but that's not always easy to do. It's not, and it's also likable. Um, you encourage everyone to stay positive. Um, again, that sounds great, but <laughs> how do we do that? Yes, so, and that's where we, we, there's some science involved. Neuroplasticity is real. Authentic positivity. Authentic positivity, <laughs> it's gratitude. It's, it's being aware of your thoughts. And I would think now, you know, back to school, I've got my um, youngest going uh, to high school next week. I've got my, I just dropped my daughter off at the dorm. So, and they have been w with us for 18 months and haven't really done the things they would have normally been. So it's a perfect opportunity to have that reset. And it seems like, I mean, I've been having conversations like, hey, so I don't know what you want to do. Uh, this bomb, elbow, do we hug, do we shake, <laughs> do we just smile and keep our distance? I mean, you can have a real conversation about it and kind of almost laugh it off, but have an authentic conversation about what makes people comfortable or uncomfortable, correct? Yes, because everybody is coming from a different place. Rachel D'Alto, again, couldn't have needed your book more at a better time, so thank, thank you, you very much. Me. And again, the name of the book is Relatable. It comes out on September 7th, but hey, it's available for pre-order today, everyone. All right, right here on GMA3 when we come back, the four... Welcome back, everyone. As summer comes to a close and we head into fall, a lot of us are hoping to continue that fresh and healthy eating as the seasons change. And our friend and nutritionist, Maya Feller, is here to walk us through the summer to fall meal swap ideas that will keep us eating well and in Thanks for being with us. I think a lot of us have a tendency to, to turn to those comfort foods when the weather starts to get a little bit cooler. That does not have to be and you got some ideas for us to make that transition. And we're gonna start with breakfast. What, what, what can we do to take that summer salad into the fall? It's right there. Maya Feller, thank you for being with us today. And I know you wanna check it out. Maya's summer to fall meal swaps, they are on our Facebook page. Thanks again. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, coming up here on GMA3, a special listen just for you. Nico Moon with his toe tapping, shoulder shaking, that's what I was doing. Number one debut single, Good Time. The song landed him not only on the Billboard charts, but also earned him a CMT nomination. And now he has remixed that hit track with Grammy Award winning reggae icon Shaggy. And they are both here to tell us more about it and treat us. We're very excited about this to a special performance. So welcome to you both. And Nico, I heard you talking. You literally just got back back from being on the road like actually just got back yeah I just got home about 15 minutes ago <laughs> well thank you for making the appearance and uh, thank you for the song I mean it is really uh, amazing uh, appropriately named your album debut album good time but it fuses together country music with hip-hop on an hour outside of Atlanta where are you from Douglasville Ah, very cool. All right, I love it. A hometown boy there. All right, Shaggy, we know you well. You've been in the music business uh, for over three <laughs> decades. Uh, bravo to you for that. And you collaborated with all sorts of different genres of music. So this is uh, nothing new for you to do something like this. But why did you decide to stick your neck out here for young Nico, who's making his debut album? Uh, we want to get right to the music because it is spectacular. We want to thank you both for being with us today, Shaggy and Nico. And we should mention Nico's uh, album, Good Time, out now, available everywhere music is sold and streamed. And now, 
for the first time, this is very exciting, performing. Ah, yes. Shaggy, and Nico, didn't you love, I love watching artists watching their music. It was what? so I'm great. still in the, I'm still at that campfire. Campfire or a beach, beach. or somewhere oh. with something in my hand. Yeah, that was a great so song. Good. Final thoughts All right, Dr. today. Jen. Final thoughts. Perfect thing to try. Manifest that. There you go. Like it. All right, mm -hmm. Dr. Jen, thank you, you. And that is what you need to know for this Monday. Thank you so much for spending some time with us for TJ, Dr. Jen, and all of us here at ABC News. Have a wonderful Monday.